5.3. In Tokyo, they will visit the Tokyo Tower, which is a communication and observation tower. The tower is 1092,1916 feet tall and has two viewing decks. The main deck is 150 meters above the ground and the top deck is 250 meters above the ground. We're probably going to have to do some sort of conversions between feet and meters, but we're not too phased. We're just going to read this through. Some of the ticket prices per person are as follows. Okay, so they have adult and they have high school um, and this is the main deck and the top deck and that's the cost. Then they have groups of between 20 and 50. Here's the cost um, per person, right? And then over here, we have groups that are larger than 50. Again, the cost per person, depending on the type of person, if you're an adult or a high school student. Don't spend too much time looking at the questions information, right? Go straight to the questions and often helps inform you, what you as to what you need to do. Use the information above to answer the questions that follow. Write in simplified form, right? The ratio of the height above the ground of the main deck, right? So the 150 to the top deck, to the 250, okay? That's over there, right? So let's write that down, 5.3.1. So it would be 150 to 250. Now it said simplified. Simplified means there's nothing, um, there's no number that could go into these numbers, right? That could make them smaller without being a decimal. Now, in this case, we can see that there's something that could go into them, which would make them smaller without it becoming a decimal. And you should be thinking around 50, right? You could be thinking 5, 10, you can do it various different ways. But the biggest number that goes into both of them is 50, which makes that side 3 and that side 5. Now, there's no number that could go into both 3 and 5, right, where you divide into it. That's going to make them smaller without making them decimals. We don't want decimals. We just want them to be as small as possible. Okay, so it's 3 to 5. Let's now move on to the next question. Convert in meters the height of the tower if one meter equals 3,281 feet. How high is the tire, tower? That much. So we can say 1092.1916. And we're going to divide it, right, by that. Because there's more meters in, I mean, there's more feet in one meter than the other way around, right? So we know that however tall it is, if we convert that to meters, it's going to be less. Because we know that it's going to be less, we're going to divide it, okay? So we're going to say 1092.1916 divided by 3.281. And your answer is, it's 332.88 meters. Please remember your unit and to round off to two decimal places, right? Because the third decimal place is below three, I mean below five, it is three, we're going to round it down, so it's going to be 332,88. Let's move on to the next question. It says, Danny stated that if they had been in a group of 60 people observing from the main deck, they would have received a 30% discount on the adult ticket. Verify whether his statement is correct, showing all calculations. Right? So, if, it's, if it was just an individual, they would have paid, right? Because they're adults and they're individuals. So, they would have paid on the main deck, right? Because it says the main deck. They would have paid this much. Okay? As part of a group, right? And the group, he said, was above 60. So, here, I mean, of 60, which is above 50, they would have paid 960. That's how much they would have paid. Okay, now we have to convert this in terms of, we have to convert this so that we can compare it in terms of percentage. Now, do you remember this? Old versus new over old times 100, right? You have to know this, okay? In this case, that's the old and, um, and that would be the new. So you would say, this is the price they would have paid as an individual. That's the price they would have paid as a group over the amount they would have paid as an individual times by 100. Why 100? Because we want a percentage, right? Put this in. Ooh, put it in carefully. I do things incorrectly sometimes, and you must try to avoid that. Okay, and it's actually a 20% discount. Okay, now what's important here is you can't just leave it at that. 
the question specifically asked, it said, verify whether his statement is correct. So you have to say, is he correct or not? He said that it would be 30%. So we say, sorry, Danny is incorrect or wrong. Okay, so you have to put that conclusion. There's a mark allocated to that. Let's move on to the very last question of this video and this question paper. On their return journey, Danny and Susan took a train from Hiroshima, that's where the big bomb was dropped in the Second World War, to Tokyo. The train left Hiroshima Station at 8.06, right? It stopped at eight stations en route for four, four minutes at a time. So that would be eight stations times four, right? Just bear that in mind, which you should know is 32. You can put that into your calculator if you're not able to do that in your head. It reached Tokyo at 12.03. The distance the train traveled is that amount in kilometers. It says calculate the average speed at which the train traveled. But they've given us a formula in terms of distance. Now, you should remember this little triangle, right? Speed equals distance over time, right? Because we want speed, right, is going to be distance over time. What really was really helpful here is that then you time equals distance over speed, right? And, and distance equals speed times time. So you can get all the different iterations from this little triangle. So what's the distance? Well, that's easy, okay? But the time is a little bit more complicated. So let's work on time. So let's look over here. They left at 8.06 and they arrived at 12.03. So it's just under four hours. It is three hours, right, and 57 minutes. You should be able to see that, right? It would have been four if this was 12.06, but it's three minutes less, so it's three hours and 57 minutes because there are 60 minutes in an hour, right? But it's talking about when the train is actually moving. Now, it's not moving when it's in the station. So you have to subtract off of that eight times four, which equals 32 minutes, right? because of all the stops, okay? So actually it's gonna be three hours and let's say what is 57 minus 32, okay? And 25 minutes, okay? Now to get speed, we wanna get it to be kilometers per hour. This is not in terms of an hour. We have to change it. Now, how do we change minutes to hours? Well, we say 25, divided by 60. Why 60? Well, the 60 minutes in an hour, and we want to get it as a percentage or a decimal or a part, right, a fraction of the hour, because we don't want it in minutes. We want it in hours. So 25 divided by 60, and it gives us that. So this year, right, 0 0.416666, this is going to be 3.416 hours. Right, and we, that's a little essay. Oh, goodness. So we're going to put that over here. Okay, don't round it off, right? We only round off at the end. So we put that in over there. Okay. So we're going to add three to this, right? Because it is three hours and that. And then we're going to say 816 divided by what we just got. And our speed at the average speed at which this train is moving is this, okay, 283, right, 2, sorry, 238.83, please round off, remember, when you want to round off to two decimal places, you look at the third decimal place, because this is above five, you round it up, and that's your answer, this is in kilometers, this was in hours, remember, we did this whole piece of work here to convert to hours, and so our answer is 238.83 kilometers per hour. And we are done with this paper. Well done, guys.